Oh hey, didn't see you there. What's up guys, Andrew Green here, welcome to my channel. And I'm gonna be starting a new video series on this channel. Something very original that no one has ever done before. That's right, we're doing an FAQ series. It's a very original idea. I'm gonna be answering your guys' questions in a weekly video format. Pretty sure no one has ever done this before, and I think you guys might like it, so I figured, you know, why not give it a shot and see how it goes. All right, all joking aside, this is something I've wanted to do for quite a while and I kept putting it off, but a couple of weeks ago, I put a question on my Instagram story asking you guys to give me any question that you might have, and I picked a few of those, and we'll go over them in this video. If you haven't followed me on Instagram already, please do so, it is at Baina Galactic. So with all that being said, this is the first question. The first question comes from Mikkel underscore Oreco, and he asks, why did I leave my job? Was it because my contract ended, and are you now fully working on YouTube? Well, the answer is, I was working at my full-time job for two and a half years, and it basically finally got to the point where I wanted to put more time into YouTube and make YouTube my full-time thing, but I physically could not do that because I was spending eight hours a day at work plus two hours in a commute. So the only way to continue to grow my YouTube channel basically was to put even more effort into it, and I can't put more effort into it if I don't have time. So I decided to quit my job and pursue YouTube full-time. So yes, I am now a full-time YouTuber, which still sounds ridiculous to say, but I guess it's true. I did a video about this and explaining it in way more detail a couple days ago, so if you're interested in learning more about why I quit and how I quit and all of that, you can definitely go check that out if you are interested in learning more. Next up, I had a few questions from people asking me who is the true gent god or if I was going to get a 21 string guitar and try and challenge DBT and Jared Dines. Well, the answer is no, I don't think I'm going to do that uh, and try to claim my place as the rightful gent god. That's not really something that I'm going to do. Um, that's their thing and I'm going to leave that up to them. Although I've tried Jared's 18 string before in the past and it is just as ridiculous as it looks, if not more ridiculous, honestly. Uh, <laughs> you cannot play that thing like a real guitar. You obviously can't get your uh, hand around the neck because it's like this wide. Um, so I assume Stevie T's 20 string is even more ridiculous. But whatever those two decide to do with their two ridiculous monstrosities of guitars, all I know is I can't wait to see it, and I'm sure some of you guys are looking forward to seeing whatever they do as well. Alright, next up from HC Redman, uh, he asks, Favorite 6, 7, and 8 string tunings, and my favorite overall tuning. So, my favorite 6 string tuning is Drop C. That's probably just because when I first started learning guitar, obviously I didn't start with a 7 string, I started with a 6 string. And I mostly was in Drop C because pretty much all my favorite bands when I was in high school were using Drop C, like Born of Osiris and uh, August Burns Red, and you know, pretty much all those like early metalcore and deathcore bands were essentially almost always using Drop C, and that is still my favorite six string tuning. For seven strings, my favorite tuning is Drop A, kind of for a similar reason, where when I got my first seven string, what I was listening to was like Suicide Silence and Whitechapel, and those guys use Drop A. It's also just a really easy tuning because it's only dropping the low seventh string down a full step and leaving everything else alone, which for once is amazing to not have to buy like stupid string gauges. Like you can literally use a stock seven string set and just detune the seventh string. And even if it's like a tiny bit wobbly, it doesn't really matter. It's a very easy tuning to maintain. And that is probably also my overall favorite tuning. I find when I'm writing music, I generally just automatically grab a seven string and go for drop A uh, instinctively, I guess. And then usually after I write something, then I'm like, okay, well maybe this would sound better in like drop C or drop E or whatever. And then I'll play whatever I wrote on a different guitar and see if I like it more. And then for his final part of his question, he asked what is my favorite eight string tuning? And that would be drop E. Similar reason as drop A and drop C. It's what most bands I listen to use. Mm, that's not true actually. Why do I use drop E? <laughs> I think I basically just chose drop E because it's like the same thing as drop A in the sense that you just detune one string down a full step and the rest stays the same. Um, I, yeah, I guess that's why. I don't really have any other reason to be honest with you. All right, next up we got a question from Ruben Dubin, and he asked, if you could only have one guitar and one amp for the rest of your life, what would they be? So as you guys all know, I use digital software for pretty much everything. I don't actually use a real amp. Ever. But with that being said, um, if I had to have a real amp, I would get the EVH 5153, obviously, because again, with all the digital modeling software that I use, almost all of it, 
I usually end up going for a 5150-ish sound, so it would just make sense to use that amp, I guess. And as for one guitar, that is the hardest question. I get asked this a lot, like what's my favorite guitar of all time, or the one guitar I would grab if my house was on fire, or something like that. And I always have a hard time answering this question because I like all of my guitars so much. I think if I had to absolutely choose one, I would go for my fast guitars, Romer 8 string. The reason being is one, it's an amazing guitar and two, it has a lot of sentimental value to me. Um, it was kind of, you know, the first guitar that started my relationship with fast guitars. So there's that. It was also just my first custom guitar in general. So there's also that. And I've just done so many things with that guitar. I've taken it to so many shows. I've done so many videos with it. And I think it's actually the guitar I've had the longest in my entire collection. So yeah, I think I would grab that one. Although my opinion kind of changes every day. All right, so next up we got Polly Fear who asks, if you could live anywhere other than Canada, where would you move to? This is an interesting question because I've talked about moving with my fiance a few times and like we've kind of played with the idea of like maybe moving in the future. And I don't think we would ever actually leave Canada. We'd probably just move somewhere else in Canada if we move at all. But if I had to move somewhere that wasn't Canada, I would probably just end up choosing the United States just because honestly, it seems like a lot of stuff in terms of like a music career would just be easier if I was in the US, whereas being in Canada, there are just some things that are harder. Everything's more expensive. I have to pay shipping and duty on everything, which sucks. And if I was in the States, I just wouldn't really have to deal with like shipping and that. And also there's just more room to grow in terms of music and uh, you know, having a band that plays in the States will grow way faster than a band playing in Canada and so on and so forth. So I'd probably just choose the United States, just more out of a sense of business than anything else. Not necessarily because I want to live in the States, but just because it would make more sense for my career, I guess. All right, next up, we got a question from Marco Ben Colleri underscore. And he asked, why and when did you decide to switch to extended range guitars? Well, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I didn't necessarily have this moment where I decided to switch. It was more like when I was in high school, I just started listening to heavier bands like deathcore bands, again, like Suicide Silence and Whitechapel, and they both used seven string guitars, so I wanted to learn their music, and the only way to do that, well, it wasn't the only way to do that, but at the time I thought the only way to do that was to get a seven string guitar. Obviously I didn't know I could just detune a six string at that time because I was like 15 and didn't know anything, and the internet wasn't as uh, helpful as it is nowadays in terms of weird tunings, but yeah, that's pretty much why I decided to do it was just the bands that I was listening to started using seven and eight string guitars. So I started using seven and eight string guitars because I'm very original. All of my ideas are original. I never copy anyone else's idea. Just like making an FAQ video series. All right, next up we got a question from Jacob underscore Apogee. And he asks, what is the biggest struggle you've encountered as a musician in bands? Honestly, I think the biggest issue I've always had in bands is just finding band members that actually uh, work with you. Um, Galactic Pegasus has had a lot of ex-band members, so I don't know if I'm just like an asshole and hard to get along with or something, but that was always the hardest thing, is finding a group of guys who all had a common goal, who all wanted the same thing, who all had the same work ethic. That is super hard to find, and especially when you're in a band where it's like, you're not making money doing it, so you really need to be driven to care about the project because that's the only reason you're doing it is because you like it, because you're certainly not doing it for the money, because I don't make anything off of Galactic Pegasus or original music at all, really. Um, so that's the hardest thing, is just finding band members that are actually reliable, dependable, are nice, and you can get along with them. Uh, that has always been the hardest thing, in my opinion. It's almost more important than being able to play your music well is just being like a good guy. <laughs> All right, next up we got Moto Josh 29 and he asks, when are you getting married? So yes, I'm getting married to my fiance. Um, we have a date set of June 6th, 2020. So still a year away, or actually almost exactly a year away. We decided to have a long engagement. We've been engaged for a year already, um, but we wanted to give ourselves a lot of time being engaged just to make sure we for sure wanted to do everything, which we both already knew we did, but you know, me and my fiance both kind of have the same mindset where we're, we're very like practical. We don't like to rush into things. We like to, you know, plan things out and make sure that it's the right move 
and that it's actually what we want to do. So that's the same thing we did with getting married is, you know, we gave ourselves a long period of time just to make sure that everything was going to work out and everything was going to go according to plan and so on and so forth. Well, I mean, honestly, Serena, my fiance, is the one who's planning most of it, but still, all the other things are true. All right, Mr. Gary Singleton, Kentucky Thunder, says, why do you zero all the time? All right, next up we got Dylan Whiskey Alpha, who says, now that music is becoming your employment, how do you spend your free time? I spend my free time now just honestly watching a lot of movies, TV shows, and playing a lot of video games. I've always done that, obviously, it's not really anything new, no new hobbies, but uh, to be honest with you guys, when I was, you know, working full time and doing YouTube, I actually found myself having a really hard time enjoying playing video games, which is something I always liked doing, but because I was always so stressed out about time, I found myself not enjoying video games anymore because I would be like sitting there playing and I wasn't really liking it because in the back of my head I had this voice telling me like, you're wasting your time, like you should be working on a video, you should be working on this, or like, oh, what about that idea? Oh, you thought you were gonna do this video by this day, but now you're sitting here playing this and blah, blah, blah. So I have this little thing in my head that's always telling me that shit, which uh, is not fun and not easy to relax and just actually enjoy a game or a movie. So I've noticed since I have quit my job and do music all the time now, that has become significantly better and I've actually been enjoying myself uh, playing video games a lot again. I mostly still play single player games. I've never really gotten super into like online gaming. So if I ever find a game with like a really amazing story, then I just play that more often than not, which are unfortunately hard to come by, but I just replayed the newest God of War, for example, which was my favorite game of 2018. Um, and then I'm replaying The Last of Us right now. So yeah, pretty much video games and movies. All right, next up we got Pedro underscore Nabor 07. He says, can you give us your best metal scream, choose from Brazil. <sighs> All right, next up we got Dominic underscore Lomas, and he asks, have you ever thought about having kids? Uh, yes and no. Um, I've thought about kids in the sense that I know I don't want kids. So if that counts as thinking about having kids, then yes, I've thought about it. But yeah, both me and Serena do not want kids at all. We've talked about this since the beginning of our relationship over four or five years ago where we both don't want kids. I mean, I guess technically things can change. That's what everyone says when we say we don't want kids, but I feel like pretty damn sure that I do not want kids ever and Serena feels the same way. Uh, yeah, I think if possible, we probably won't. <laughs> All right, then we got metal underscore four underscore brains with a Z. What got you into guitar? Who are your biggest influences? So what got me into guitar was actually a friend who I started hanging out with a lot in like the first year of high school, so when I was like 13. Um, I didn't listen to music like at all. I just listened to like whatever my mom had on in the car when she drove me home from school. I didn't know anything about music. I didn't really care about it at all. But then I started hanging out with my friend and he was super into music. And every single time I was hanging out with him, he would always be playing music. And what he would be playing was like Linkin Park, System of a Down, Mudvayne, Korn, Slipknot, all that like new metal stuff. And at first when we hung out, I always hated it. I thought it was so annoying, especially System of a Down. I thought they were the worst of them all. I hated the Serge Tankians singing. I thought it was so annoying. But then something magical happened, I guess, where I just kept hanging out with him and he kept playing it anyways. And then eventually something just clicked, I guess. And I finally was like, okay, this song is actually pretty good. And then as with pretty much anyone who listens to metal, they kind of start out with something softer and then gradually keep going heavier and heavier. And it was the same thing. I started out with bands like, again, like mostly Linkin Park and System of a Down were the first like two bands that I became like obsessed with when I was 13, 14. Um, and that's the same reason I started playing guitar again, which is kind of ironic because like neither of those bands are known for, you know, having good guitar parts necessarily. Or not good guitar parts, but challenging guitar parts, I should say. They definitely have good guitar parts. Um, but yeah, it was kind of the same thing where, you know, I wanted to learn how to play those bands' music. And again, the same friend who was showing me all these bands also had a guitar and like he was learning how to play it. So he would show me like, oh, this is how I play like Aerials by System of a Down. And I think he showed me how to play that on his guitar because it's like, you know, six and oh, it's a super easy and it's just bar chords. 
um, which is about the extent of my playing still to this day, but that's besides the point. Yeah, so he showed me how to play and I thought it was really fun, so my parents bought me my first guitar uh, that same year, so again, I would have been like 13 years old. I actually still have it, let me grab it. Yeah, so my parents got me this. Obviously, it didn't look like this when I got it. It was one of those like, you know, $100 Stratocaster copy things. Um, it was like, I think the brand was called like Robson or something like that. Um, and yeah, I used that for a long time until I upgraded, but obviously it didn't used to look like this. There was a while back where I went through a phase where I like really wanted to get this guitar up and running again and I like painted it terribly, tried to do a swirl, and then I thought it looked like a watermelon, so I bought a pink pit guard just to make it look like a watermelon. And uh, yeah, I just kind of gave up halfway through and never ended up actually finishing it. I think I bought like a bunch of stuff for it. Like I bought this bridge and this pit guard and I think these are new tuners. I don't really remember honestly, but I ended up never finishing it because I was like, I'm not actually going to use this thing even if I get it in working order. So now it's just a wall decoration. All right guys, so that is the first edition of this question style video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know any questions you have for the next video. Feel free to just comment them in this video description. I thought about like maybe getting you guys to go to my Instagram and like asking me on there, but that sounds like kind of a hassle. But you can still follow me on there, it's at Bane Galactic. But if you don't want to, that's fine. Just comment in, on this video what questions you have for me, and I'll pick some and I'll answer them next time. Pretty standard. Again, it's like all the other YouTubers do. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you got to ask, and I'll see you guys next time.